Hi, welcome back to Recitation. In lecture, you've been learning about triple integration. And I have a problem here for you on computing a volume of a region using a triple integral. So let's look at this. So I have a volume, and I'm describing it to you. It's the volume uh, inside the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared, and bounded by the plane z equals 2y. So I've drawn a little picture here for you. So this is the this is the paraboloid here. And we're just sort of taking a plain cut of it. And so this is going to slice off some chunk of that paraboloid. And what I want to know is what's the, what's the volume of that, of that piece that gets cut off by that plane there? So below the plane and above the paraboloid. So why don't you pause the video, take some time, work out this problem, come back, and we can work on it together. I hope you had some luck with this problem. I think it's a bit of a tricky one. So let's start to work through it together. Um, so sometimes you have a problem with a triple integral. And you, know, you need to set up your bounds of integration. And sometimes you can look at it, and it's just clear what they are. You know, if you're integrating over a cube, life is really easy. Um, but in this case, this, this region that we want to integrate over is kind of more complicated to understand. right? So, it's easy to see, well, relatively easy to see what the bounds on z are. So let's, let, let me draw a couple of uh, one, one two-dimensional picture. So let's, I'm going to draw the, the, the yz plane cross-section here. So in the yz plane cross-section, this paraboloid just becomes a parabola. So that becomes the parabola z equals y squared, which is you know, a plane section of the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared. And this plane z equals 2y becomes the line z equals 2y. So, th and this little sliver is a plane section of the region in question. So we see that z is going from the paraboloid to the plane. Um, and over here, we see that z is going from the paraboloid to the plane. But what we need, really need to understand then is what the relationship between x and y is. So what is the shadow of this region? How, how are x and y related to each other? How can we bound x in terms of y or y in terms of x? Or you know, should we use cylindrical coordinates or what? Um, and so in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to figure out when you, when you project this region down, when you, when you flatten it along z, so you're, you're disregarding z now, and then you're just looking at its shadow, its footprint in the, in the xy plane. You want to figure out what, what is that region? What does it look like? So you know, somehow we'll project down. There'll be some region r down here. So I'll call this region r. And that region will be the projection of this, of this solid region down. And it has some boundary curve C, say, the boundary curve of the region R. Um, just you know, in case we need to refer to them later, it's good to give them letters so that, we can, so that they have names. So what we need to figure out now is what is this region R? Now, this is tough to do by just sort of intuitive reasoning or just by looking at this picture that I've drawn. So in this case, we're kind of forced to use some algebra. All right. So what do we know about? about this region R and this curve C. Well, C is what we get. It's the projection downwards of the curve of intersection of this plane with this paraboloid. right? So it's the projection down of this curve of intersection. So what does that mean about its equation? Well, it means it's what we get if we set uh, these two, you know, if we, if we solve for z in one of the two equations of the surfaces and plug it into the other. And that'll give us an equation with just x and y, and that will be the equation of this curve c. Okay? So in our case, that means that we have to, so c is given by this equation x squared plus y squared equals 2y. All right, so whenever x squared plus y squared equals 2y, that's a point xy such that the, directly above that point is a place where the plane intersects the, the paraboloid. Well, OK, so what is this curve? Well, a little bit of algebra can help us sort that out. If you bring the 2y over here and complete the square, you, you can see that we can rewrite this as 
x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. I've just I've brought the 2y over. I've added 1 to both sides, and I've, I've factored this, the y part. And so this equation, this is an easy equation to recognize. This is the equation of a circle uh, with center 0, 1, and radius 1. So let's, let's draw that then. So here's a picture of what the shadow looks like in the xy plane. So it's at, the center is at height 1, and then it's this circle. Uh, that's almost a circle. Looks enough like a circle for my purposes. So this is the region r. It's a circular region of radius 1 with center 0, 1. OK, great. So I'm going to just shade that in again because I like doing that. OK, so that's, that's the region r. That is, so what is this region? It's the shadow of our solid region. Let's look back over here. It's the shadow of our solid region in the xy plane. So when you project down, that's the region that you get. So why do we need that? Because that tells us, so we know when we set up this triple integral, z is going to be going from the paraboloid up to the plane. But then we're going to need on the, that's, that's going to be the innermost integral. But then the middle integral is going to be you know, y in terms of x or x in terms of y. Or if we do polar coordinates, it's going to be you know, cylindrical coordinates. It's going to be r in terms of theta. Um, so we need to figure out sort of what, what the boundary is, what that region looks like over which we'll be integrating um, for, those, for the outer two integrals. So OK. So well, OK, so now I've been saying, oh, we could use cylindrical. We could use rectangular. What do we want to use? Well, so this is a circle. It's a circle. It's not centered at the at the origin, but it is tangent to one of the axes at the origin. Um, so this is a nice, a reasonably nice situation to, to, to do polar coordinates in. Now you have to remember, you have to remember back from when you learn or cylindrical coordinates. You have to remember um, from when you learn cylindrical and polar coordinates what, what the equation of such a circle is. And so I'm going to write it down here and, and I'm going to invite you to go uh, look up why this is true if you don't remember. Um, that this, that this curve has equation in polar. So this is the, these are the x and y axes here. So this equation, uh, sorry, this curve has in polar coordinates the equation r equals 2 sine theta. All right, so that gives me this curve here, the outer boundary. And now what I want is I don't just want the curve, I want to integrate over the whole region. Um, and I want to integrate over it once. Remember, polar coordinates are a little tricky because you have to worry about are you overlapping and so on. Um, so, so how does this work? At, at, at theta equals 0, we're at the origin. And then as theta grows, um, we, we get further and further away. So we are sort of, this is our radius growing out. And then at pi over 2, we're at the top point of the circle. And then as it comes back into pi, it comes back in. So we want theta from going from 0 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to pi here. So at pi over 2, it's at the top. And at pi, it comes back for the first time. And what about r? Well, it looks like r has to go all the way out to 2 sine theta. And in fact, we always want it to start at the origin. So we always want r to go from 0 to this outer boundary, 2 sine theta. So this describes this, this region big R that we're trying to integrate over this circular region in polar coordinates. So OK, so, so it's a, a fairly easy description of polar coordinates. You could also describe it in rectangular coordinates. And you could try to solve the problem that way. Um, I'm not going to do it for you, but, but you could give it a shot and, and see if you can come out with the same answer in the end that we do. Um, so OK, so now what have we done? Well, we, we know I haven't written our bounds on, so let me write our bounds on z right here. So we know that z is going from the paraboloid. So that's from, if we look, it's the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared. But we're working in cylindrical coordinates now. So we need to write this in terms of r and theta. So that's z is going from r squared. And it's going up to the plane z equals 2y. Now y in, in cylindrical coordinates is r sine theta. So z is going from r squared to 2r to sine theta. So let's go write that down over here. So z is going from, whoops, not, uh, just ignore that, uh, from r squared, which is less than or equal to z. And it's going all the way up to 2r sine theta. 
So these three equations describe our region. Yeah? Zero less than theta, less than pi, that just says theta. OK, then when, when theta is going from 0 to pi, r going from 0 to 2 sine theta, that says, well, in the xy plane, we're tracing out this shadow, this circular shadow. And then as z goes from r squared to 2r sine theta, that says, OK, so above this shadow, we're, we're above the paraboloid and below the plane. So that's exactly the region that we want. Uh, so OK, so now how do we get its volume? After we figured this out, well, we, we just write down the triple integral. Right? And we write down a triple integral. So v, the volume of a region d, is equal to the triple integral over that solid of dv. Okay? And in our case, in, in cylindrical coordinates, dv is going to be dz times r dr d theta, or r dz dr d theta. Okay? So this is equal to, so if we're integrating. So it becomes r dz dr d theta. And now we need to put in our bounds. So we said, if we look over on this side of me, here they are. And these are our bounds that we're going to be using. So theta is going from 0 to pi. And r is going from 0 to 2 sine theta. And z is going from r squared to 2r sine theta. So this triple integral gives us precisely the volume of our region. Um, and in order to figure out what that volume is, we just have to evaluate this integral. So let's start doing that. I don't think I'm going to go quite all the way, um, but, I'll, but I'll do most of the work. Um, so OK, so let's do the innermost integral first. Whenever you have a triple integral like this, a nice iterated integral, you always start at the inside and work your way out. Well, here, so our integrand is r, and we're integrating with respect to z, and r doesn't have any z's in it. So OK, so this inner integral is going to be easy. So I'm going to rewrite. This is equal to, well, we keep our outer two bounds, so it's still from 0 to pi, and it's still from 0 to 2 sine theta of, so now we get, OK, 2r squared sine theta minus r cubed dr d theta. So what I've done here is I've just, I've just integrated. I get the antiderivative of r dz is rz. And so then I take the difference between those two bounds. So I get r times 2r sine theta minus r times r squared. So that's r times 2r sine theta is 2r squared sine theta minus r times r squared is minus r cubed. OK, so I've just done the first integral. So now um, integrating with respect to r, OK, this second one isn't so bad either. We've, as far as r is concerned, this is just a polynomial. Theta is constant with respect to r um, when we're doing an integral like this. So OK, so the second integral is not too bad either. So this is the integral. So our outer integral from 0 to pi sticks around. Let's put, not do this one in one fell swoop, I think. Um, so it's going to become 2 r cubed over 3 sine theta minus r to the fourth over 4. And we're taking that between r equals 0 and r equals 2 sine theta. And then that whole thing is going to be integrated d theta. Uh, so what do we get when we plug this in? Well, at r equals 0, this is just 0, so that's easy. And so we need the top one r equals 2 sine theta. So this is going to give me something like 16 thirds sine to the fourth theta minus 4 sine to the fourth theta. So I think that works out to be uh, 4 thirds sine to the fourth theta d theta between 0 and pi. Um, so now you have to remember how to do integrals like this. Um, so this is a, you know something. You probably learned back in the, uh, the trig integrals section of your Calculus 1 or 1801 class. So, um, well, so when it's an even power here, I think the thing that we do is we, we use our, our half angle formulas. So um, now I'm just going gonna, gonna to tell you what your final steps are. So first, you're, you're going to use your half angle formula. So what is that half angle formula? So it's sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 
2 theta over 2. So you're going to have to plug this in here, right? Sine to the fourth is sine squared quantity squared. And then you're going to have a cosine squared 2 theta. So you're going to have to use the, the, the double angle formula again. This time you're going to have to use the double angle formula for cosine, which is very similar, although not exactly the same. So you're going to have to use those two uh, double angle formulas. After that, you'll have something that's straightforward to integrate. Um, so you'll, you'll have something that's straightforward to integrate. You'll integrate it. And if I'm not mistaken, what you get at the end is that you just get a, a fairly nice and simple pi over 2 as your answer. So you can check your, your work there and make sure that, that you got out pi over 2 at the end. And hopefully, if you, if you tried to do this during, using rectangular coordinates, you also came out with something like this as well. In that case, you'll, you would have to do a trig substitution at some point to, to evaluate your integrals, or, or you might have an arc sign involved. Something, something like that will happen. Um, but it should also give you pi over 2, of course, because it's the same region, just, just described in a different way. So let me quickly recap what we did. Way back over here, we had this description of this region. So it was the region above a paraboloid and below a plane. And so when we're setting this up, we have to figure out, we have to figure out, in order to do a triple integral over this region, in order to find its volume, we have to know well, we have to know, we have to pick an order of integration, and then we have to know what the, what the bounds are for the inside in terms of the outer two variables, for the middle one in terms of the outermost one, and so on. So in this case, that means, first, it was, it was a natural choice to make z the last variable, sorry, the first variable, the innermost variable. And so then after that, we needed to project to find the relationship between in the xy plane between the other variables. Now in this case, we decided after we, we figured out, so we did that by solving this, this little algebra problem here. We solved for z in the two surfaces that we, were, um, that we were given, and we set them equal to each other. And so this gives us a description for the boundary curve for our region. And because it's a nice circle, um, this, this suggested that one possibility was cylindrical coordinates. So we went ahead and we found in cylindrical coordinates the, the description of this shadow. And that then we used the, the knowledge we previously had to describe the whole region in cylindrical coordinates. So we had this description of our entire region. And then to compute its volume, we just set up a triple integral. Volume is equal to the triple integral dv. Um, in our case, dv, since we're in cylindrical coordinates, that's r dz dr d theta. We put in our bounds, and then we evaluated the integral. I'll stop there.